a very good afternoon. I am thankful to Heritage for inviting me for this talk. And I am more grateful to all of you lovely audience for choosing to spend this lovely afternoon listening to a guy who has seen more failure than success. I never studied beyond class 12th. There also I barely managed to pass. Thereafter, I spent three years in the National Defense Academy training to be an officer. Still couldn't become one. And to, I still struggled to spell simple words. Now that you have attention on the slide, I would begin by asking, what is success? Well, success has different meanings for different people. Some would say having money is success. Some would prefer power. A luxurious lifestyle for some. But COVID taught us, and rightly so, that the true measure of success is the ability to live life in your own terms. Or simply put, to do what you want. Well, if success means doing what you want and considering the fact that I am married, you can understand the rest. Unlike me, this young man you see on the screen right now isn't married or wasn't married and didn't get a, get a chance to get married. When he was 21 years old, in his World War II vintage Centurion tank, he came face to face with the state-of-the-art patent tanks of the Pakistan Army. The Indians were outgunned and outnumbered. The famous Battle of Basantar on the plains of Shakargarh in Pakistan. Khedrapal stood like a rock between India and the Pakistani advance. He alone was faced with four Pakistani tanks when his tank was hit and made him mobile. His commander rightly told him to abandon his tank and retreat. His tank could move. Khetrapal's now famous response was, I will not abandon my tank, sir. My gun is working and I will get these. And get them he did. He destroyed the four remaining Pakistani tanks before taking a direct hit onto his tank. He was taken out of his burning tank. His face was burnt. His hands had melted. And he became the youngest recipient of the Parambir Chakra. Posthumously. Like Khetrapal, there are some others who measure success with a slightly different yardstick. Every man born on this earth will die one day. What better way to die than facing fearful odds? for the ashes of your fathers and the temple of your gods. My friends, the young men and women who choose to join the Indian Armed Forces share this very ethos. I had the privilege of being born into the Indian Army. My father's course mates and unit officers are as close to me as his real brothers. Unfortunately, when I was only 12 years old, I lost my father. Being a serving army officer, he had a military funeral. With his spire burning, the guns booming for the last salute, I was standing there in my school uniform. 
and I had vowed that I would outshine him as a soldier. I came very close to fulfilling that vow. In 1993, I successfully cleared the National Defense Academy entrance exam and the SSB interview thereafter to join the National Defense Academy with the 89th course. Now clearing uh, the NDA exam, the UPSC exam, followed by the SSB interview is tough. Very few succeed. I was one of them. Now normally you would presume that success is followed by reward. So you get into NDA and that's the reward. But the reward was anything but. The variety and novelty of punishments in the National Defense Academy are a tribute to the ingenuity of the generations of army officers who have passed through the National Defense Academy. One such punishment is Singer. The majestic Singer Fort overlooks the huge National Defense Academy campus. It's a few thousand acres. The great Maratha warrior Tanaji had scaled this fort once, and the fort is named after him. Yours truly scaled it over a dozen times. But Tanaji scaled it in battle. I did it on punishment. The first few terms in NDA were tough. I kept getting on the wrong side of the seniors. And again, uh, I am not a big conformist. And that resulted in me enduring the most innovative of punishments. Singer, just like I told you, was one of them. But uh, NDA grows in you. A few terms in NDA, and I was well settled and well on my way to passing out with the 90th course after having been relegated once. The guy up there who writes Destiny is no friend of mine. A few months short of the passing out parade, when we finish our training, I was injured in boxing. The injury damaged my kidney, and I was declared unfit for military service. I had lost my dream. And with that, I had lost the will to live. It is believed that success is not final and failure is not fatal. But my friends, suicide is fatal and final. I was almost there. Boxing had made me lose my dream. I had been boxing right from the first term in NDA. And boxing is mandatory for every cadet. Not just in NDA, in most military academies. Because boxing teaches a very important lesson for a soldier. In boxing, it does not matter how badly you fall or how many times you fall, you don't lose. You only lose when you refuse to rise up. This lesson that I had learnt in academy held me in good stead and I managed to stand back up on my feet and craft a reasonably successful corporate career. A few years down the line, I came across a young man who had been injured in the officer's training academy. He injured his spine, which left him paralyzed as a quadriplegic. 
his father who was a humble farmer from himachal ran from pillar to post to get him treated went to every possible hospital or mode of treatment that was available ayurved naturopathy everything and fortunately did manage to get him treated but by the time this young man was treated his father had exhausted all his resources he had gone bankrupt he had sold his land his house was mortgaged unable to sustain his family any longer this man committed suicide now this young man was cured but still could never stand back up on his feet he was he was doing odd jobs when i met him a person who was training to be an officer of the indian army was doing odd jobs i tried to help him but he was so broken that he ran away from me also that made me realize that i cannot fight as a soldier destiny has denied me that right but i will fight for the soldier i took up the cause of disabled cadets but the struggle still continues the three young men you see on your screen now chetan vikrant and shubham got injured in the academy and their injuries were crippling now these young men did not get crippled because they were reckless it was not that they took unnecessary risks they got injured doing their duty they got injured during their training a training which is hazardous which is designed to make them capable of leading their men from the front in battle to protect you and me these guys got injured for the nation it is our government's duty to take care of them let alone providing them any resettlement options the government does not even to provide medical care to these guys the armed forces have repeatedly been asking for disability pension and all consequential benefits for medically boarded out cadets but uh, this proposal has not been accepted by the government yet i have been personally taking this issue up for a long time now but i'm failing to see any empathy in the bureaucracy the academy teaches us resilience chetan has learned to walk without support today vikrant has started talking he uttered his first few words after a gap of years shubham sits on his motorized wheelchair and has become a share market expert these guys are truly resilient they are the true resilient fighters and i feel privileged to count myself amongst them my daughter hums this song what doesn't kill you makes you stronger well quite a few of us almost got killed and it did make us stronger the challenges that each one of these resilient fighters has posed are the stones which are paving the path 
on which they are marching to their success. My uniform is gone, but the soldier in me will walk with me to my grave. Jai Hind.